Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us. The search is on to try to find every single person with whom that Ebola patient in Texas may have come into contact. It is a daunting task, and already there's a second individual now being closely monitored who was close to the patient. But we know more about the case, and the more we know about it, the more troubling questions are being raised. The area's outraged today because a patient stricken with Ebola was sent home from a hospital emergency room and may have infected others. And here he is, patient zero. His name is Thomas Eric Duncan, originally from Ghana. TV's top doctors are expressing dismay. I spoke to ABC's Dr. Richard Besser in Liberia, ground zero of the Ebola outbreak. The screw up here was that a hospital who sees somebody who comes in with fever um, needs to ask about travel. And if they'd asked this person, have you traveled? They, he would have said, I was in Liberia. He should have then been immediately isolated and tested. But they, they, they saw him, they sent him out, and he was then out for two more days, potentially exposing people. And, and that's a problem. CNN's Dr. Sanjay Gupta confronted CDC Director Tom Frieden face to face. This could be playing out right now in other emergency rooms around the country, this exact situation where there could be somebody who has a fever, ends up having Ebola, but they're not tested. Here's what we know about the patient in Dallas. On September 19th, he flew from Liberia via Europe to visit relatives in Dallas. He came in contact with hundreds of fellow passengers, but he had no symptoms. Ebola is not contagious until the symptoms begin. September 24th, Dallas. The symptoms appear. Severe fever, fatigue, excruciating headache. September 26th. The patient goes to the hospital. He's given antibiotics, and incredibly, he's sent home to this apartment complex in northeast Dallas. The Ebola goes undiagnosed. The hospital's we're, we're Dr. Mark Lester revealed the patient did tell one nurse he had just come from Liberia. Regretfully, that information was not fully communicated throughout the full team. September 28th, he returns to the hospital in an ambulance. This time, the ambulance crew suspects he may have Ebola. The paramedics who brought him to the hospital and even the ambulance are in quarantine. Ambulance 37 is now parked behind low walls. Access blocked by a stepladder and some tape. The red alert is now on. Here's Stephen Fabian. Hospitals across America are getting prepared to quarantine and treat anyone showing symptoms of the Ebola virus or anyone who has come in contact with an Ebola victim. I'm here at Valley Hospital in Ridgewood, New Jersey, inside their special isolation unit. Chris Robertson, the nurse manager at the emergency unit, showed me where future Ebola patients would be treated. So here's where our patient would be. We're covered head to toe here in the isolation room. What happens next? The key is to just keep the patient isolated from the rest of the population. It's very strict isolation and protect the staff uh, coming into the room. Patient Zero is believed to have infected one other man he was in contact with. Dr. Besser warns there may be other Ebola victims out there in the USA. I wouldn't be surprised if they if, if they do find some people who've been infected by him, um, but it won't be a widespread transmission. It's something that will be very limited. So far, the CDC has identified 18 people, including five children with whom the patients come into contact. And among those being monitored, the Dallas ambulance crew that brought the patient to the hospital. But what about the vehicle itself? This is how you decontaminate an ambulance that has transported an Ebola patient to the hospital with great care. It's scary. You know, the guys that are dealing with this right now, my heart is with them and their families. I really, I, I worry for them. Inside Edition was given an exclusive look at the decontamination process with this ambulance, similar to the Ebola ambulance in Dallas that is now under quarantine. Our crews in Texas are doing the same exact thing. <laughs> Sal Payne is a foreman with BioRecovery Corps. This ambulance on Long Island, New York, was contaminated when it transported a dead man and bodily fluids leaked out. Ebola was not a factor in the death, but the process is about the same. Workers don white hazmat suits lined with rubber and use up to five sets of gloves. They are also equipped with special masks. A special fogger releases a heated chemical inside the vehicle. It's a sanitizer called Microban. All surface areas are sprayed by hand. It'll kill virtually anything and definitely kill Ebola. Next comes this $10,000 piece of equipment, the AirZone XT14000. 
nicknamed the Ozonator. It uses ozone to neutralize any lingering bacteria. Workers seal every opening with duct tape and the machine is left inside for six hours. At the end, you hopefully have one very clean ambulance. The EMS crew is being monitored so far shows no signs of disease. A bicycle and a